so let's get started here so okay guys so today we're gonna go through the Kubernetes right so I believe everybody is familiar with docker right what is docker and how docker can benefit us right what kind of benefits we are achieving using the docker so I'm not going to explain more about the docker today right so but we're going to discuss more about kubernetes what is exactly a kubernetes right so when we start discussing about any of the topics right any technology so a couple of things are always in our mind what is this right and how this is going to beneficiate us and what all the benefits we are going to achieve from that right a couple of things when what and why these things keep on revolving in our mind right Sometimes I heard people like the people say like the Kubernetes will replace Docker. No, that's not Right, so let's and just try to understand what is Docker. What is Kubernetes first? Right, so there is The name Kubernetes originated from the Greek and meaning is helmsman or a pilot Right, do you know guys what a pilot does a pilot just drives your car right and your flight right that doesn't mean the pilot owns that right in the same way the kubernetes is a pilot to run your docker containers right we have docker containers now we have seen a couple of issues while running the docker containers if you remember right if you are running one docker container that's fine right if for the same applications if you want to run more than one containers right you remember you you used to face issues like you have to run your containers in the multiple ports isn't it right so the docker the kubernetes is a pilot which is basically running your containers right and is an open source container orchestration system for automating your application deployment scaling and management right you just have to tell kubernetes how many containers the kubernetes need to run right it will automatically run all the containers for you you do not have to worry about running individual containers how many pods you need to run so on and so forth so this will run your container whenever needed it will increase your container whenever needed it will decrease your container on the basis of the policy so automatic automated scalings and everything will be done and automated deployments will be done by the kubernetes right and i would say you know this kubernetes project was made open source in 2014 by google and most of the you know google experience is revolving around working with the kubernetes right it has been said the millions of containers are running you know every second in the google right you would have never faced you know any slowness issues anything with the you know with the google because it's most most of the Google environments are running over the container itself. So any question so far? What is Docker? Any any doubt? Any question on this? So again, guys, in simple words, the Kubernetes is nothing but this is a orchestration orchestration system. That means, so if you are running your containers, it will. You know whenever the more containers are needed it will be automatically scaling your container and when not needed it will be decreasing your container so the kubernetes is nothing but just a driver who is running your docker container in one system hope this makes sense to everyone right so let's go back in time guys and discuss about a couple of things right so in initially we used to have some traditional deployment right then we came to the virtualized environment then now currently we people talk about containerization environment or we talk about the container deployments right so let's quickly talk about the traditional deployment first right initially what used to happen guys we used to have hardware on top of the hardware we used to have, we used to have operating system then we used to have application on top of those uh, you know operating system but what can be the problem guys right i have if i have one hardware 
then what I'm doing is either I'm installing operating system on top of that and to properly utilize my hardware I'm use installing three application on top of it. Let's say web app and DB I'm using or either call it like we have a three instances application running on the same box. What problem can happen guys here? Can anyone tell me? Sorry sir. Let me explain it a bit more for you guys. Right. What I said is in previous days we used to have a hardware. Either we used to have an individual application, ser application servers for each application. Either I will have one DB server, one application server, one web server. And if I have multiple application, then I will have a separate hardware. Right. But what if I want to utilize my hardware? So what I will think of, I will install three application in the same hardware. But the problem is if this application start utilizing more hardware, more CPU utilization and more issues are coming there. So these two applications are going to impact because of this, isn't it? Right, though one application having issue and it might impact the other application in the same box. So such kind of deployments, you know, can create a failure for the other application and entire downtime for other application too. So we didn't want any downtime, right, in the mod modern systems. So that's what we thought of. We needed some improvement in the traditional deployments, right? We wanted something which, you know, if our, this application gets impacted, these two applications should not be impacted and there should not be any downtime for these two. So the generally our requirements came in. So the virtualization came in place. We have a many kind of art virtualization. I'm not going to explain it at this moment, right? So the virtualization means we have one hardware on top of that hardware. We have operating system or we have hypervisor or we have hardware on top of that hypervisor. I mean hardware. We have a hypervisor, right? And on top of that, we have multiple VMs, right? So what will happen now? We have a separate VM in the same machine earlier. It was not earlier. We, we were installing multiple applications. So what we did now, we created three VMs and two VMs and install the application individually in each VM. So what will happen if this VM or this application start utilizing more CPU, more memory or any, I know any exceptions. So this VM will go down only. This VM will be impacted and the downtime will be for this application only, not for the other VM hosted on this hardware. Right. But again, couple of things was in our mind. Right? Again, are we utilizing our hardware completely? Because if you are creating one VM, right, you'll have to specify specific hardware to that specific hardware. I mean, for that VM, even if that is being utilized or not. No matter. Right. So again, any questions so far? Again, we know, right? Everything comes with the requirement, right? First, we had we, we when we was, we was going with the traditional deployment, we was good enough, right? But some requirements came in, right? Some issues came in. Performance issues was there. Downtime is increasing. So we came with the virtualized deployment, right? And Again, when we came here, we was happy, but again, we thought, right, my hardware is not being utilized properly. Right. And my, my I'm not able to do the rolling deployments also. So I was looking for some solution which can help me on this so that I could properly utilize my hardware. Right. Even if you see here, I'm you, I'm giving space to my VMs. I'm also giving a couple of some memory CPU utilization. You know, hypervisor would be using those two and it's, it's, it's kind of independent software installed over it and which is very heavy. Right. Again, so I needed some solution which can utilize my hardware properly and give me more benefits. Right. So the new things came in our life, which is called the containerization system, right? Which is called the container deployment. What happens in the container deployment, guys? We may have a hardware on top of that hardware. We may have an operating system. And on top of that, we have one software called the runtime, which is called Docker, RKT Docker. And we have a different kind of things similar to the Docker in the market, right? Which is called the container runtime, right? We either may have hardware 
on top of that hardware we have operating system and runtime or we have one vm on top of that vm we have container runtime and we have multiple application container running in the same machine which is using our host bin and libraries right container are basically you can say small piece of software which basically utilize your you know operating system kernel right to perform or you can say to run your applications it shares basically you know your system library that's what these are very small in size right and this way you'll be able to utilize your hardware properly as well we will understand more about it going down right just go through the documentation i have specified everything what all benefit you are going to get from the container deployments right we already know in container deployments basically we use this namespaces and ct groups right so how that works i have already explained in the docker so go through the those videos if needed any help and come back to me right the next is what all benefits we can have we can have agile application creation and deployments right increase is easy and efficiency of containers image creation compared to the vm images right you take more time to create the vms while you take very less time in running the containers creating the containers and you know increasing the containers you can do continuous deployment integration and deployments using the containers right you already know right when you have created image you can deploy it to any of the environments right that's what the de continuous deployment makes it pretty easy it helps you to separate the devops and you can say dev and op ops seg segregation that we used to have in initial time right it basically gives you more benefit please go through these things here or i believe you would be already familiar with the docker then i don't need to explain it more now so the next i will quickly jump on why you need kubernetes and what it can do for you right again hum upar dekh rahe the ki kubernetes hai kya right then we came to know that kubernetes is nothing but this is just a pilot right who is running your docker containers right if needed it is scaling up if needed it is scaling down your containers right so whatever policies you are telling kubernetes are just running those so why we needed kubernetes again so as we know the containers are good way to bundle and run your applications in a production environment you need to manage the containers that run the application and ensure that there is no time no downtime guys हमेशा हमारा कंसर्न क्या होता है हमारे कंसर्न होते हैं कि हमें कम से कम डाउन टाइम हो राइट अभी हमें पता है कि हमारे प्रोडक्शन में कोई भी एप्लीकेशन चल रही है तो मुझे नहीं चाहिए कि मेरे डाउन टाइम आए अगर मैं प्रीवियस अपनी डिप्लॉयमेंट पर जाऊं इन केस अगर राइट मेरी अगर वीएम डाउन चले जाए तो सब कुछ डाउन चला जाएगा राइट तो मुझे कुछ ऐसा सिस्टम चाहिए था गाइस की जैसे ही मेरा मेरी वीएम या मेरा कंटेनर डाउन जाए अपने आप मेरा कंटेनर अप आ जाए राइट right? अगर मेरा लोड बढ़े तो मेरे कंटेनर अपने आप बढ़ जाए अगर मेरा लोड घटे तो मेरे कंटेनर अपने आप घट जाए राइट सो दैट्स व्हाट अ क्यूबनिटीज डज इफ यू सी हियर फॉर एग्जांपल इफ अ कंटेनर गोस डाउन अनदर कंटेनर नीड्स टू स्टार्ट एंड वुडंट इट बी इजीयर इफ दिस बिहेवियर वाज हैंडल्ड बाय अ सिस्टम राइट This is going to be very helpful. अगर ये सिस्टम सारी चीजें मैनेज कर ले सिस्टम खुद से मैनेज कर ले कि अगर मेरी मेरा कंटेनर डाउन जाए तो अपने आप अब आ जाए मेरे कंटेनर अगर आ, मेरा अगर लोड बढ़ रहा है तो कंटेनर बढ़ जाए राइट दैट्स हाउ द क्यूबिटीज कम्स टू रेस्क्यू गाइज राइट द क्यूबिटीज प्रोवाइड्स यू बी द फ्रेमवर्क टू रन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड सिस्टम रिसेंटली it takes care of scaling requirements failover deployments patterns and more for example kubernetes can easily manage a canary deployment for your system do you understand guys the how kubernetes is beneficial for you right automatically it will up down your container if container is getting down it will check the policies and if one container is needed it will up one container if load is getting down it will do it if failover is needed 
and everything it will be managed by the kubernetes even if you see the kubernetes is able to handle the canary deployments also for you right which is called a very difficult kind of deployment in the industry guys if you most of you people would be would not be familiar with the canary deployments but you would have seen that right the canary deployment is let's say main kehta hu ki main maine ek application banayi like aur mere billions of user us application ko use karte hain theek hai maine apni application mein kuch improvement kare kuch bug fixes kare right main un ek lakh ya crore logon ko ek saath us patch ko nahi bhejna chahta right main chahta hu ki main apne हजार लोगों को चेंजेस पुश कर दूं, राइट अगर कुछ इश्यूज आते हैं तो वी कुड बी एबल टू फिक्स देम और जब सब सारे इश्यू फिक्स हो जाएं, देन मैं अपनी डिप्लॉयमेंट्स को रोल बैक करूं। दिस इज कॉल्ड दी कैनरी डिप्लॉयमेंट आप मोस्ट बेसिकली देखोगे मोस्ट ऑफ दिस साइट लाइक कमर्शियल साइट राइट वुड बी डूइंग इट जैसे अगर आप पेटीएम यूज कर रहे हो आप कुछ भी यूज कर रहे हो तो वहां पर क्या होता है कि दे मोस्ट बेसिकली डू दी कैनरी डिप्लॉयमेंट्स राइट उनके सारे फीचर्स सारे क्लाइंट्स के लिए अवेलेबल नहीं होते हैं राइट दे पुश सम चेंजेस टू सम क्लाइंट अगर उनको कोई इशू आ गए तो दे विल रिपोर्ट इट राइट इन द प्ले स्टोर इन समवेयर तो पेटीएम वुड बी एबल टू क्विकली फिक्स दोज इशूज सो वेन एवरीथिंग इज डन वेन दे है क्लाइंट फीडबैक फॉर द फीचर देन दे ट्राई टू डिप्लॉय फॉर दी ऑल दैट्स वॉट कॉल दी कैनरी डिप्लॉयमेंट okay guys so what kubernetes provides you so the kubernetes can provide you the service discovery and load balancing that means kubernetes can expose a container using the dns name or using their own ip addresses if the traffic to the container is high kubernetes is able to load balance and distribute the network traffic so that the deployment is stable agar aapko yaad hoga docker mein agar docker mein aapko kya hota tha इनकेस अगर आपने एक कंटेनर बनाया आपको लगता है कि यार नहीं मेरे को तो दस कंटेनर चाहिए फिर क्या करोगे आप मल्टीपल कंटेनर लॉन्च करोगे राइट आई मीन पुटिंग देम इनसाइड द लोड बैलेंसर एंड एवरीथिंग इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट बट दिस एवरीथिंग इज डन हियर विद द कम्युनिटी राइट इट विल गिव यू अ लोड बैलेंसर यू कैन एक्सपोज योर डिप्लॉयमेंट बाय यूजिंग कपल ऑफ थिंग्स वी विल डिस्कस इट लेटर राइट so एवरीथिंग यू नो व्हेनेवर न्यू कंटेनर आर बीइंग लॉन्च दे विल बी एडेड टू द लोड बैलेंसर ऑटोमेटिकली एंड You don't need to worry about it. Your your traffic would be distributed accordingly. You can do the storage orchestration. That means the Kubernetes allow you to automatically mount a storage file system to your choice, such as local storage, public cloud provider, and more. You'll come to know with the time. It provides you the automated rollouts and rollback. Hopefully, automated rollouts means you know whenever you are doing any deployment, so it can give you the rollouts. automated rollouts means uh, if you have 10 containers right it will you know roll out your container one by one that means one container would be replaced you would be able to test it then you can do it for the another containers so on and so forth in the same way it provides you the rollback feature if your deployment is not getting fine go ahead and you know roll back those so the next is automatic bin packaging right the automatic bin packaging is means that you can specify specific kind of cp how much cpu how much memory you know one container should, should be able to use it provides you with the self healing that means you know self healing means if one container goes down it automatically start your containers if load is increasing if you have put the policy it will automatically increase your containers so on and so forth right you can also do the secret and configuration management using it so that means you can you can use the password authentication octa authentication token and you can use the sss key to you know access your i mean your platform right so you can get couple of benefits using the kubernetes so you'll have to see it you'll have to go through the documentation i would again focus on the kubernetes documents the kubernetes document is pretty awesome guys right if you go there it's it's most of the things you will find self explanation you know with the self explanation there so rely on those documentations also right any doubt so far anyone having any question
please come forward no no, no? Sir. all good so far no okay i have just taken one document here so mini maze let me open that for you what is that let me open this should have this in download section okay guys so now let's talk about components right after understanding what is kubernetes and how this is going to be helpful for you right it's time to understand the components of kubernetes make sure like before we start getting with the deployment you should be familiar with these things guys otherwise this is going to be no use for you all right so kubernetes has couple of components guys the first is called the master so i i would call it kubernetes has two kinds of node one is called the master node which is called the master cluster and other called the nodes right we will understand the differences of these also so do you guys remember when we used to do the docker swarm the docker swarm was also is also a orchestration system we used to have master node and slave worker node there right the master node was who was managing the complete cluster but the slave node where we have our container placed in the same way we have the kubernetes here right Kubernetes has master and worker nodes. The master master node has couple of components, right? HCD, API server, scheduler, control manager, right? And node has couple of components which are called the kubelet, container runtime, kube proxy. We will discuss about these deeply, right? So first guys we talk about the etcd that's one of the essential component of the kubernetes cluster remember it is ko rat lena you know remember each and every component and learn about them right the etcd cluster stores all the information about your kubernetes cluster right aapka jo bhi kubernetes cluster hai us kubernetes cluster ki सारी की सारी इंफॉर्मेशन जो होती है वो ईटीसीडी के अंदर होती है दिस इज कॉल्ड अ काइंड ऑफ डेटाबेस व्हिच स्टोर द इंफॉर्मेशन और डेटाबेस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ की वैल्यू पेयर रिमेंबर दिस राइट इफ आई से कि यहां पर क्या होता है क्या क्या चीजें ये स्टोर करता है ये आपके स्टोर करता है नोड्स कितनी नोड्स आपके क्लस्टर में है कितने पॉड्स आई मीन कंटेनर आपके क्लस्टर में है ऑल द कॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ योर क्लस्टर सीक्रेट्स accounts roles binding each and everything of kubernetes cluster would be in the etcd that's what this is called one of the essential component 